All right, we're down to 75 microns now. And I've had it on here, well, you can see it's 28 minutes now, but it's actually been on an hour and 28 minutes because I lost contact again with my Arduino uh, pad. I should have used my iPad. The old Arduino one has issues when connecting Bluetooth. So this was a runner-up video that you've seen before of many videos in this series apart about using the BlueVac micron gauge, using the micron gauge in the field piece, about using hoses, and the difference between a known good clean tank for a test tank to confirm that do you have a problem with your system on your job site or your car, or do you have a problem with your connections maybe uh, rubber o-rings or something you know your seals at the end so the only way you can find that out is by taking your system off the vehicle and testing it on something you absolutely know is good and the only way you can really know if you have a good testing is by having a secondary backup micron gauge and micron gauge is not necessarily looking for leaks it can find them but leaking under vacuum is nothing because it's only 14 PSI different from pressure that could be two or three or 400 PSI or vacuum from atmosphere to vacuum is only 14.7 PSI. So there's very little possibility to find a leak unless it's big. And with rubber seals and gaskets with an oil film on it, when you pull a vacuum, you can actually pull the rubber together and it will seal under vacuum and you'll lose no you'll have no leak at all but when you put pressure it rolls and pushes the rubber in the other direction and it opens up and it'll leak under pressure but not under vacuum vacuum has always been a poor way to look for a leak unless it's really big i've had a leak on a hose it was a bnw this was back in the 90s i was on a customer's place at a shop and I had it under vacuum and held a perf vacuum. In those days, I had an analog uh, micron meter and it held a perfect vacuum, no problem at all. But as soon as I put pressure in it, it was hissing and leaking really bad. And right by the exhaust manifold, by the B&W on their hose, they were notorious for this, the exhaust manifold would cook the rubber and the material that was the strength, like it had threads and had material in there. And it would become brittle and they would split and lose their pressure the refrigerant would come out they'd blow up it made a nice split but because it was rubber and it had an oil film over its perfect little split when drawing a vacuum the rubber draw together with the little oil film and it perfectly sealed under vacuum but as soon as i put it pressure it started leaking so a micron gauge is not necessary for looking for a leak it's to prove that you put your system together correctly together, you have no leaks, but it's to prove that you're removing moisture and you have brought the moisture content down to an acceptable level. This is what a micron gauge is good for. All right, so we're gonna blank off the valve for the hose, for the vacuum, and we're gonna test the vacuum decay on these brand new hoses that just came out of a bag and we're gonna see what it does. So let's go there. There we go and you see it shooting up really fast. Now you've seen my old hoses, the previous video. See these old hoses? These old hoses are a year old. I did a video when I made these up. These are yellow jacket hoses that if you see the shiny stuff in there, that's silicone grease and I broke the sheathing on the outside. These are shrink wrap sheathings that I have over it. You know, the stuff you use in electronics where you stick wires in and you heat it up and it shrinks. That's what's over these hoses. It makes the hoses last longer. Look at that, 800 microns. I performed the same test on these old hoses and they held under 200 microns for about an hour. This one's 60 seconds. Here we're, we're already failed, we're already at 900 microns. There is no leak in these hoses. These are brand new hoses right out of the bag. They're ex set up exactly the same way. The valves are closed. They're nice and tight at all their ends. This is the outgassing of the rubber in the hose. I had somebody 
have a, more than one person, but recently another person say, oh man, the gauges are leaking or the hoses are leaking or something. I put it on the vacuum pump and I got it really low. And he said, and I turned it off and it's leaking. It just keeps on raising. Yes, but what he doesn't understand, rubber was never meant for deep vacuum and especially uh, brand new rubber. It has a lot of chemicals in it. It has a lot of solvents in it. Like, you know, like think of gasoline, alcohol, propane. Rubber is made with solvents uh, that outgas. And what you're seeing is these are old hoses. They were packed in a warehouse, exposed to atmosphere. They're not airtight. They're not hermetically sealed and they don't, they're not in a perfectly dry condition. So the rubber absorbs moisture and you have the gases that are outgassing. And this is what you're seeing right here. So you've seen it was down below 75 microns. And now look where we're at right now. There's nothing wrong. All I did was change hoses. I used these hoses and it stayed under 200 microns and it just stopped basically moving. But these within, what are we, two minutes now? And it's already up to 1200 microns you are not supposed to use hoses for trying to determine uh, a vacuum decay test. Now, what is the difference between these hoses? I've been using these in wet, dirty systems, different refrigerants, ester oil, peg oil, mineral oil. I clean them out with alcohol and blow them out with 600 PSI of dry nitrogen. But these are well used, abused hoses, but they don't leak. But these brand new ones out of a bag leak. Oh my God, they must be bad hoses. No, I got to get this point across to you. Using refrigerant charging hoses for trying to perform a vacuum decay test will make you fail like this and make somebody really upset because they think something is wrong. There is nothing wrong. The only thing wrong is the person performing the test. You're not supposed to do vacuum decay test through refrigerant charging hoses. Now, why do these ones work? Well, I put these under deep vacuum every day, many times, and I store them under vacuum sometimes or with dry nitrogen in them. But I specially treated these hoses. If you look inside there, you see that shiny stuff inside there? There's a ton of silicone grease underneath this sheathing inside here. These rubber hoses are literally encased in silicone, silicone grease. Not the dry kind of silicone you get from caulking from the hardware store that you use it around your bathtub. Sil dielectric grease you use for spark plug boots, that's what's in here. And it literally penetrates, and I have it under vacuum many times, and that's why I'm able to get vacuum down to 40 microns with these hoses. If you remember the previous videos, I was down to 40 microns using these hoses, and when I turned off the vacuum, it raised to like 176 and started to stop right there where these brand new ones are doing this there's nothing wrong with your gauges there's nothing wrong with the hoses you're using the wrong tool for the wrong purpose for the wrong job the only way you can test the system is by having a micron gauge attached to the system not to the hoses i'm really trying to get this point across to people they just don't understand it in the automotive industry most of them I just don't understand why they don't understand it's very frustrating uh, true tech tools has a really good book about vacuum uh, I think they remember them saying their original copy was from the 50s and they updated it and they have information about using the blueback pro and other blueback uh, micron manifold it's a $19 little book and I highly recommend it uh, go to true tech tools get that book get a separate micron gauge to prove what's good and not good and if you've seen earlier from the earlier videos I proved that these hoses can hold a vacuum decay test be under 200 microns and hold it I prove that brand these are the same hoses yellow jacket yellow jacket they came from the same lot. One, you see there's one, two, and then you see the empty one here. Three, that's those hoses. And four was from last year, this one right here. They're all the exact same hoses. The only different one difference is I treated these 
with silicone grease. And before I even coated them, I put the hoses in a vacuum chamber and I drew it down to below 30 microns overnight before I stuck them in the sheathing and I put silicone grease. I put them back in the micron chamber and the vacuum chamber, pulled the vacuum on them, purged it with argon. I filled it up with argon or nitrogen. I can't remember what I did that day. And then I immediately, I heated the hoses and shrank the shrink wrap with clean, dry silicone grease around them. That is the only difference between these hoses that could pull down to 40 microns and hold a vacuum under a vacuum decay below 200 microns and these hoses that are brand new right out of the bag. I hope somebody understood that. All right, guys, I'll see you.